let's set up the integral. Um, in spherical coordinates. Um, for the volume of the solid region bounded by z equals root 4 minus x squared minus y squared and z is equal to 0. So let's think about what shape we have going on here. So if we just took the equation, squared both sides, z squared is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And let's, um, you know, add things to both sides, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 2 squared. So we see that we're talking about a sphere of radius 2, but actually we're only talking about the top half, right? Um, so based on this, I mean, we, if we drew, drew a really brief picture, I'll try anyway, you know, you've got like, there's a circle here, that's the equator, and then there's just the top half, no bottom half of this sphere. Um, so solid filled in sphere, uh, we should have then the values of rho are between 0 and 2. Okay, what about the values of, uh, let's do theta next. Yeah, theta. So we're going all the way around, you know, this way. Um, I, is that making sense? Like, if you follow along here, that part that has just been thickened is helping to represent values of theta between 0 and pi over 2. But you go all the way around, so this should be 0 to 2 pi. And then phi, so that's from here, you know, down this way, I guess, or from here down this way. You, we only get the first half, right? So instead of 0 to pi all the way, we only um, get the top half, right? So this is meant to give us the top half. Top, you know, if, if by top we're talking about like in terms of z coordinate. Okay, so integral sign, integral sign, integral sign. Uh, we'd be integrating the function 1. The dv is going to get replaced with rho squared sine of phi. Um, d rho, d theta, d phi. So rho, um, we saw just a moment ago, goes from 0 to 2. Theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And finally, uh, phi is going to go from 0 to pi over 2. What I just want to do is compare this to, so we're done with the problem, but I would just like to compare this to our answer from part E earlier. So in part E, we were talking about solid sphere of radius 9, um, z greater than or equal to 0. It's, I think, morally the same thing. So if I just maybe take the answer from part E here and copy-paste this below just so that we can compare. I mean, different problem, but I think helpful for comparison, yeah? Okay, so different function as well but I hope the similarities here make a lot of sense. The only real difference here is, is a 2 versus a 9. All right, let's uh, set up uh, an integral in spherical coordinates. Okay, for the volume we're going to integrate the function 1 again, um, between the cone z equals root x squared plus y squared, and z is equal to, and uh, let's just name it here, the half sphere, z is equal to root 18 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, so yeah, the, the, the information was, uh, I guess, already provided here, right? That uh, the thing that's on the outside, the, the shape that's further away, is going to be, you know, take, take, you know, square both sides of this here, and you have 
z squared equals 18 minus x squared minus y squared. Yeah. So this, um, yeah, this this sphere of, sphere of radius root 18, right? So if we just reorganize this, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 18. So sphere of radius um, root 18. So in terms of uh, a picture, you know, there's a cone, and then this the cone itself, you know, there's the origin, yeah, and then so I'm not drawing axes because it just get, would get messy. But then there's a sphere of radius 18 here, and there's say the top, you know, part of it, and so that intersects, you know right there and that that's as far as we go so there's a part that's above the sphere but we don't keep that part so for the region that's here okay this is kind of round up here right um not not flat um this for the, uh, for the region that that we should shade in uh the sphere is further away okay um so we can see from the picture that we're getting values of rho you know like down here that are close to the origin and then points that are further away, as far as away as root 18. So rho should go between 0 and root 18. Now, what's going on with theta values? OK, with, with maybe an x-axis drawn in lightly there and a y-axis here. Um, maybe I'll just do this in another color real quick, is that we move around this way and experience all values of theta from 0 to 2 pi. Maybe let's just keep this in blue here. zero. Uh, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to 2 pi. Now, I think the tricky thing is what's going on with with phi? Yeah, so with phi, well, here's now just the positive z-axis part. We're trying to ask how far away do we experience points that are shaded here? Well, it depends on what angle is made up to here because that's going to be the maximum angle here, right? So if we were to draw this sort of flat, there's a z-axis, and I don't really know what to call this axis, but it uh, looks like this, yeah? And what we're trying to do is figure out um, what angle is this. But that is given by uh, this right here. And, and the thing is, um, what, we're, what we're seeing in this is that z squared is going to equal, from, from this equation there, if square both sides, z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to replace the x squared plus y squared with an r squared. And this sounds a little weird, but I'd like to create an r axis. So as r grows, z grows by the same amount, because z is equal to plus or minus r, right? So so actually, um, the, my picture is perhaps a little deceptive, but there's a 45 degree angle. This is also a 45 degree angle. So here, um, the value of phi is going to equal pi over 4. So we're seeing. Uh, the points that are closer, uh, use another color, use green here. These points that are closer um, have phi values tiny, and then here are points where, as I keep drawing a new green line, these are points where the value of phi keeps increasing, but the largest value we're, we're going to see is pi over 4. So now we can set up an integral. Okay, so in the end, we've got an integral, integral, integral. We're integrating the function 1 dv as usual is going to turn into rho squared sine of phi and then let's just go with the usual order here d rho d mm, let's make that better d rho d theta d phi and then we just need to list the bounds so from the data from here 0 to root 18 and uh, theta is 0 to 2 pi and then finally uh, phi is 0 to pi over 4 so actually in terms of setting up uh, integrals if you have the right shape, spherical coordinates makes it actually really nice to set up. Let's try doing a question that's more or less backwards. Let's sketch the region whose volume is is integral 0 to pi, integral 0 to pi over 2, integral 2 to 3 of 1 times rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. Now, I intentionally switched up the order. This is allowed. Um, 
you know, these are all constants anyway. So, uh, okay, so we're talking about a volume, yeah? Um, the, the point is rho goes between 2 and 3. So I'm just trying to pick off the information here so that we can talk about the geometry of what's going on for our answer. But rho goes between 2 and 3, and then the next integral uh, let's see, tells us that phi goes between 0 and pi over 2. And finally, the last integral tells us that theta goes between 0 and pi. So this part here, think about how, you know, in the xy plane alone, we only want stuff that's there. So in other words, in three-dimensional space, um, we, we shade uh, with the x-axis as the boundary, but which side? Is it this side or that side? Notice we're covering the positive, so this side somewhere, okay? So I'm not saying we get all of this stuff, but but it's over here somewhere and not over there. All right, so, so that much we figured out based on this. We also see uh, that phi should go between 0 and pi over 2, meaning the angle made with the positive z-axis has to be acute. So we don't get the part that's under the xy plane. Oh, I think that's helpful. I'll, okay, so let's try again. So we we get the stuff that's over here. Basically, this half of the xy plane um, due to the, the, the theta bounds. But the phi bound says that we get the stuff that's above, nothing that's below. None of the stuff that's below, just the stuff that's above. Okay, and then, so, so far, these two things combined, what I'm seeing is uh, we're dealing with the regions where, so these two things combined tell me that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, and z has to be greater than or equal to, wait, no, 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 that's not it, sorry. y has to be greater than or equal to 0. I'm not even reading my picture correctly. Yeah, x can be positive or negative. So y has to be greater than or equal to 0, and that that came from from the theta bounds and then z has to be greater than or equal to zero that information came from the phi bounds so imagine that part right if you have three planes that are all perpendicular to each other so the xy plane the xz plane the yz plane that would partition space into eight equal size pieces and we're we're keeping two of those pieces um, there are two places where y and z are both positive uh, why are there two such places? Not because there's two inequalities here. It's because there's the portion where x is positive and there's a portion where x is negative. So it's the part that's above here and then the part that's above there. Okay, now what? We still have to deal with the the row bounds. Hmm, row between 2 and 3, huh? All right, well, here we go. So we don't uh, want points that are too close to the origin. So a point is not going to be accepted unless its straight line distance from the origin is between 2 and 3. So something like this. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So there's a sphere. Let me draw, draw the equator part. And then that. So there's a sphere that's a hollow cavity here. Um, oh, but we only want y bigger than equal to zero. So we actually don't want this half. Let's try again. Uh, okay, I'm going to just start over. Sorry. So x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. Now while there is one, two, one, two, one, two. While there's technically a sphere whose equator is is here, we don't even want the whole thing. And uh, my the app I'm using doesn't really appreciate erasing so I'm just gonna say that we just do that okay so uh, the in the XZ plane there's a I have to kind of tilt the angle a little bit but there's that part there and then um, this continues down that way okay so there's if you want for, for a bit of shading, there's this. But then the point is all the stuff that's behind this shield, so to speak, is not filled in. Then one unit away, we have the same shape, just a little larger, yeah? So so then there's a space that's between this region. 
these two. Yeah, this is not easy to describe, but uh, that's the shape we get. I hope this sort of helped. Um, this part inside should be actually unshaded, you know, so yeah, something like that.